Okay, in this video, let me show you guys the Euler's method. And this right here is the numerical approach to deal with differential equations. And here's the idea. Suppose we are given the first derivative, the dy dx, to be, well, this right here, it just means that we have an expression in terms of x and y. And we are also given an initial point, x now, y now. Suppose this right here, it's pretty hard to solve. Then in this case, you know, give Euler's method a try. Since this is pretty hard to solve, maybe we don't have a way to get y as a function of x. The idea of that is we can actually somehow go from this initial point to get to the point that we're trying to get to. And of course, this is just an approximation, and this is the idea. Let me draw you guys pictures along the way. So let's see right here. I have x now, y not. So let me just put down this right here as x now, and maybe I will say the given point is right here. And this right here, I will just label the y value to be y now right there. So here's the idea. Remember, dy dx is the first derivative that tells you the slope of a tangent line. Tangent line. When you are given this point, you have the x value and also the y value. You can just plug it into this expression and then calculate the slope at that point. So you actually get the, you know, the slope of the tangent line right there. And this is actually pretty similar to the idea of the slope field, if you have done that already. But the idea is that once you have the slope, it's pretty much like it tells you how far you can turn, right? how much you have to turn, things like that. So if you know the slope, you have the direction that you know where to turn. So maybe the slope is like, pointing it that way, you could just say it like this. And you can just take a step forward like that. So suppose the slope tells me how to face that way, and then I will just walk this much, and I will stop. Each every time, just take one step forward. And it depends on the step size you take. Uh, of course, the smaller, the better. The smaller, the better the approximation will be. But this picture is just I will draw it big so we can see it. Anyway, suppose we get to this point, I would call this to be x1, and this is just y1. And now, you see, this is pretty much two points, and we have a line. So we can talk about equation of a line. And we also have the slope as well, isn't it? So here is the idea. Let's talk about the point slope form of the line. I will just write this down like this y1 minus y na that's equal to m for the slope times x1 minus x na like that. And in fact, if you divide this on both sides, you pretty much get the slope formula, like the good old days. Okay, so let's do some algebra right here. I will move this to the other side. So I'm talking about y1 equals right here, I will have y na and for the m, this is the slope, which, if you refer back, this right here tells you the m in purple now. And let me just write it down here, f of, well, how can we get the slope value? It depends on the x0 and y0 value, because you have to plug in this into the expression here to compute it, so you can get the m. So this m is the slope, and that's f of x naught y naught. Okay? And let's see what is this. x1 minus x naught is what we call the step size. So you go from here to here, you decide how big you want to take the, for the step size. And for notation, let's just write this down as h. This is the step size h. I uh, will just write it down. So this quantity is just h times that. So hopefully, so far, so good. And Next, if you want to get to the next point, of course, you move the same step size. So you want to just cut to here, and this is going to be x2. And you are right here. You're plugging x1, y1 into this expression. You compute the slope. So maybe this time you have to turn this way, and then go that much, right? So maybe you plug in, and then you get the slope that tells you to face this direction, and you just take that step and want to get to this point. This right here will be y2. 
And of course, from here to here, that's a line again. So you can pretty much do this. And of course, you guys see the deal. You can pretty much see that y2 is equal to, well, y1. And we add it with h times f of x1, y1. Because we want to keep each every step the same size. So we can just always write down this minus that as h. Right, the difference between the x values as h. And you just have to remember where you were at and add it to this part right here. So that's pretty much the idea. And maybe you just have to go this, like, you have to do this many, many times. Let me just draw this again. Maybe it looks like this. This is y3, and then this is, like, x3. Well, that's supposed to be the same size each every time. This and that is also h, h, all that. And you pretty much do all that, and maybe in the end, I can get to xn, which maybe is like this point. So it's like polygonal lines. Well, I put on dot dot dot. Here, if you want to end up with yn, you just put on yn. In order to get yn, you need to know the previous y value, which is yn minus 1. And you add it with h for the step size, and you multiply by the previous slope, which is f of x n minus 1, y sub n minus 1, like that. And this right here is the Euler's method with step size h. And that's pretty much it. Notice, I don't know what exactly y of x is. Maybe it's a curve like that. Maybe, right? And if you keep the h small enough, this polygonal line will be really, really close to the actual curve y of x. And with that being said, let me demonstrate an example for you guys right now. And here is an example. We are given that dy dx is equal to 3x plus y, and the initial condition is y of 0 is equal to negative 1, and we are going to approximate y of 0 0.2 with step size 0 0.04. Well, before we start, let me just tell you guys that this right here is not separable but it's still doable, you will have to use a technique called the integrating factor. You can check my other video for that. But in this video, I will show you guys how to work this out. And the main thing is that you need to have patience and also your know, organization. <laughs> so here we go. Let me show you guys how to organize your work. From here, we know that x0 is 0, and this tells us y0 is equal to negative 1. And I will just write this down for you guys right here. x naught is equal to 0, and y naught, y naught is equal to negative 1. So, so far so good. Now, continue. x1. I will just go from 0, and then we'll add the step size, which is 0 0.04. It's like, you take one step. So you get 0 0.04. Now, y1 is equal to the following. You will have to know your previous y value, which is negative 1, so just put that down right here. And that's this part right here, okay? And then I'm going to add it with the step size, which is the h right here. So I multiply by 0 0.04 with the following. Take this, multiply by plugging this, plugging that into your differential equation here, the expression here. So I'll put this down in red. I will plug in the previous x and y value into your, you know, is spread to the differential equation. So I will plug in 0 and negative 1 into here and here accordingly. So we will have 3 times x is 0, and then we add it with y is negative 1. So let's put it down like that. This is pretty much it. And now, seriously, have the patience and do this. Uh, calculate it was so. And for the people who like computer programming, you know you guys can program this later on. But I will tell you guys the answer to this is just negative 1.04. Now, continue. X2, we'll just add the same step size again. Consistency is the key. Don't ever take a different step size. Anyway, Y2 now, you look at your previous Y value, which is negative 1.04, and then you add it with the step size, which is 0 0.04, and multiply that with 3. This goes to X, so you'll be 3 times that, which is 0 0.04, and then you add it with the step size, which is 3, and then we add it with Y, which is that, which is negative 1.04, like this. Negative 1.07, which is that, which is negative 1.07, like this. Negative 1.0768. Anyway, you continue, x3 is equal to, you just go ahead and do it again, 0 0.12 now. And for y3, 
you look at your previous y value, which is negative 1.0768, and you add it with the step size, which is 0 0.04, and you multiply by plugging this, plugging that into your differential equation, so you get 3, and do it on your calculator so you get approximately negative 1.1103, like this. Yeah, there we go. Now we continue, of course we are at x4 now, y4, it's going to be, you look at your previous y value from here, which is negative 1.1103, and you add it with the step size, which is 0 0.04, times plugging this, plugging that into your differential equation, so we get 3 times 0 0.12, plus that y value, which is negative 0.1103, like this. And here you get approximately negative 1.1403, Okay, one more. x5 is equal to 0 0.20 or 0 0.2, 0 0.20, doesn't matter, let's say 0 0.2. y5 is equal to, look at your previous y value, which is negative 1.1403, and then you add it with 0 0.04 times 3 times that x value, which is 0 0.16, and you add it with this y value, which is negative 1.1403. 1403, like this, pretty much. Right, so once again, you're plugging this and that into there. You get approximately negative 1.1667, like this. And this right here tells you y of 0 0.2. Okay? So, you see, right here, if you line up, you know exactly when to stop because right here, the x value is 0 0.2. The y value is this, and that tells you y of 0 0.2 is that, approximately speaking. And of course, I know some of you guys would like to know, actually, the solution to this differential equation with this initial condition is y of x, y as a function of x, is equal to 2 times e to the x minus 3x minus 3, like that. And if you use this to calculate y of 0 0.2, of course, you're just plugging 0 0.2 into all the x. So you get, you get this, which is pretty close to the approximation that we got. So the approximation is pretty good.